As a child, I had always wanted to be an archaeologist and particularly excavate in Egypt or so. So when I then started studying medicine and did a PhD in molecular biology, I was aware that there were hundreds and thousands of mummies of animals and humans in our museums from ancient Egypt. So it was rather natural then to see could we apply these techniques to these mummies and actually get genetic material, get DNA from them and study it in the laboratory. Well, I think I and many people are, are very interested in Neanderthals simply because of the fact that they are the closest relatives of all present day people who live on this planet today that are extinct. So they are closest extinct relatives of present day humans. So if we want to define ourselves as a group relative to all other organisms that exist on the planet and has existed on the planet, it's them that we should compare ourselves to. Well, so of course, if you then want to go back in old remains that are at least 40,000 years old or older, to retrieve DNA from them, there are many technical challenges. First of all, there's very little of the DNA left. It's degraded to short little fragments and it's often chemically modified. And it's present in a vast excess of DNA from bacteria and other microorganisms who colonized the bones when they lay buried for tens of thousands of years. And the other challenge is DNA from ourselves and from people who produce the chemicals we use that we might mistake for DNA from the Neanderthal. So the work really over the last 20, 30 years in our laboratory had been focused on avoiding these problems and, and dealing with them. Well, so I think one thing that is really crucial in any academic in, in endeavor is actually collaboration and getting new ideas also across disciplines. So that's certainly one idea I'm very happy to be in Toulouse. In the 90s when we got a chance to start a new Max Planck Institute in Leipzig focused on anthropology, it was really a unique chance because anthropology had been very weak or largely absent in Germany after the, the terrible crimes that had been done during Nazi time. But when one then picked up the courage to say we start a new institute, we had the advantage that we could really start from scratch and think how would we do it today? And the idea that we came up with was to say let's focus the institute on the question, on the question that we sort of focused on what makes humans unique. And anyone who's interested in that question would be welcome to come there and work, no matter if they come from what you traditionally would call humanities or more hard sciences. But one other condition that I actually believe is quite important was to say that everyone should do empirical work. So one should have ideas that you test by actually collecting data or doing experiments. Because then you can really work. Even I can understand what a comparative linguist does if you sort of data oriented, I just have to understand what data they collect, what questions they ask, and then I can collect, understand what they do. What we sort of explicitly did not want to do is sort of have more a type of anthropology that's more about social or political ideas. So, and of course, science is always just a sort of slow progression. It is very rewarding, I think, that we now, since over a year, has a very high quality genome from a Neanderthal. So we can now compare that genome to the genomes of present day people. We can look what do all present day people have common in, uh, common in their genome, but where the Neanderthals don't have it and look like the apes. We can make that catalog, the catalog of in the order of just 30,000 changes. 
we know that among those changes probably hides the things that make modern human cognitively say different from other groups. But it's a big, big challenge now to find those things. And actually that's something that we're very bad at presently in, in genetics research to associate a particular genetic change with something in how we behave or think or, or so. That's really a challenge for the next 10 years now. Well, I think one direction that this work will take in the, in the next years is to refine the techniques we have developed so that we can look at also older remains and less well-preserved remains and get a view of the genomes of also other extinct forms of humans. And another direction that I think is equally exciting is to actually to try to understand the consequences of those changes that are unique to modern humans to see what they actually mean for how we function today as individuals and as groups. The type of research we do where we sort of look, our interest is now to look at things that all present day humans have in common and that make them unique relative to Neanderthals. So that is really looking at the common genetic inheritance of all humans today. I, one can perhaps construct scenarios where there are ethical dilemmas with that, but it's not something that's immediately obvious. There are other types of research then where I'd be much more sleepless over it. Mm -hmm.